Hey YouTube, welcome back to another RCVerse video. Today we're going to show you how to attach a cord, or in this case an extension cord, to a centrifugal or self-priming self pump. I'm tripping over my words today. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to have to, we got a high grade um, Husky, I believe, extension cable. This is a 100 foot extension cable, uh, 10 gauge, 3 wire, so you got 2 plus to ground. Uh, this pump is a Franklin Electric uh, self-priming centrifugal pump and it can operate on 120 or 230 volts so we're going to make sure that it's set to 120 volts by taking this back plate off and then we're going to get to hooking up our wiring and we're also going to be um, adding a pressure switch because this pump doesn't come with a pressure switch so we're going to incorporate a pressure switch and wire everything up and uh, so let's get started. Alright so the first thing that we're going to get doing here is just make sure that this pump's voltage is set correctly so to do that on most of these pumps you just take this back plate off there it is okay so it looks like this one has the type of switch that you pull it off and put it back on if that makes sense but it should after you see me do it so right now you can tell or maybe you can tell there's a little white arrow that's pointing to the 230 volt here so we need to move this to where the white arrow is pointing to 120 volt. So I'm just going to grab a hold of it here, tug it off, move it down, make sure we're lined up. It looks good. Push it all the way down and that looks great. So now we know we're switched over to 120 volts. All right, so before I throw the back plate on, I do want to just point out one thing here, um, is you want to pay attention, and it's on the, the motor here, but uh, you want to pay attention to your neutral in 120 volt and your uh, your hot leg. So this di there's a diagram on top of the motor that says that L2, uh, which is the top one here, is our neutral, and then L1 is our line one. So I'm just gonna mark line one with some black so I know once I got the back plate on which wire goes where. So now we'll throw this back plate back on here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do here is just go ahead and get our pressure switch mounted and then we can feed our wires through and kinda go from there. So, and then to hold this on, we've got this connector here. This is an electrical uh, connector and it's called a nipple close very strange name but I didn't name it so so this it just runs through the side of the pressure switch and then it threads in directly into the motor here I'll just get that nice and finger tight in there this doesn't have to be super tight I mean it just serves the purpose of keeping the pressure switch on there and in place um, so fortunately we've already got the the ground connection that's going to work properly for us and uh, the only thing we're going to have to replace is these connectors. Okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut these off and replace them with uh, the fork style connectors that will just easily slide under these screws. So we'll just snip those leaving as much of the wire as we can I'm guessing this is probably a 14. That looks like it was right. And we've got our crimpers here. Lock this guy in. Crimp it down real good. Always make sure to check those so they don't pull off. And we've got our next one going in. And that one's also nice and secure. So now we can just hook these up to our pressure switch. And we know that uh, this here is our L1, because I marked it. So we're gonna make sure that we put our L1 or our hot on the extension cord right here, and then the neutral over here. And we're also gonna have to hook up these grounds. And you wanna make sure this is as tight as you can get it with your hand when you're working on pressure switches because the better connection the better the better it's going to be 
Okay, so now we're ready to start messing with our extension cord. Um, we are going to have to plumb up the pressure switch with these fittings so that the the tubing, I've got some quarter inch tubing here, and that's going to run from underneath the pressure switch all the way up across over to the top of the pump. And that's where this bushing and this fitting are going to go. So we'll get into that here in a minute, but we're going to just finish up with the extension cord real quick. So for that, we're going to have to cut one of these ends off, brand new fancy extension cord. And we're going to use this Romex uh, tool here. So this just basically goes on the on the wire and you go round and round trying to keep it lined up. We're almost through. Uh, okay, let's see. So that is a nice way to cut the cable most of the way through without any risk of damaging the inside cables. Oop, there went that terrible Phillips screwdriver. I say good riddance. But you can see that now we just kind of break the rest apart with our fingers and it comes off and we have a nice clean cut all the way around here and that makes it nice and easy so we can cut this off just a little higher and it doesn't really matter. We'll probably have to strip that back a little bit farther but that Romex tool is actually pretty sweet. That, that's a lot cleaner than, than what you would get otherwise. So, Alright so here we go. We've got this thing finally stripped back the rest of the way. You can see that that uh, Romex cutting tool there just kind of makes a nice clean cut, which not to say you couldn't get that with a razor knife, but it's a nice way to kind of ensure that you're not nicking your, nicking your wires. So that's kind of nice. So I'm just going to cut all this insulation junk out of the way here. The reason that we're doing this is this particular pump is not offered with a longer cord or with any cord and we had a customer that requested a cord so we got one and we're gonna put it on for him. Kind of fun, easy to do. Most people just do this at home so we figured this would be a good uh, video to put on YouTube just because uh, a lot of people do it themselves. You can see just that is a lot of copper with that size 10 wire. Those are huge, real pretty looking. So we know that our black is going to go with our black over on L1, our white's going to go over here, and our ground obviously is going to go down with the ground. So with the ground style, I'm going to use a closed connector similar to the one that we just put in, and then we're doing the fork connectors on the other one so that they're easy to pull off of there and do whatever you need to do. And I do give these a pretty sturdy tug to make sure that they're on, because it's pretty easy to you know, have an extension cord out there somewhere and kick it or trip over it or something like that and you don't want your wires popping out on you. You'd rather the plug end that's plugged into the wall come out, if anything. Alright, so now the key here is remembering to run this through this hole, but what we've actually got for some added support here is we've got this connector that runs through that hole and actually bites down on the cord so that once again you're less likely to have those pull out. Um, so we're going to be pretty secure on this one. Probably should have put this in before I hooked all these wires up in hindsight 2020, but not that big a deal as you can see. Look at that, that is a nice fit. Hopefully this will fit down over it. We might have to customize this just a little bit. Uh, because of this, there's this indentation here. So you can see that this kind of has an indentation that sandwiches down on the uh, on the cord. And I don't know. Well, we'll try it. We'll see if it'll go. Just like this. Boom. All right. I don't know why that screw decided to get all cock, cocked on me, but that looks a little better. Now we'll re-tighten this back up here. Hopefully I've got enough wire. It looks like we're good there, going to be good there. All right, so now we're going to land these. Okay, so we've got that one all situated now. We're ready for our neutral. Got a little 
little bent. There we go. That one fit in there real nice. Tighten that puppy down. Then all we've got left is our ground. And that one, once again, has to come all the way out. Okay, so now, before we button this up, make sure to check all these and make sure they're good and tight. I'd pull on the, uh, the connection, make sure the screw's tight, but then also tug on the wires, make sure everything's real nice and tight in there. So the last thing we're gonna do on this guy is since this is a lower pressure, higher flow pump, and this is a 40-60 pressure switch, we're gonna lower the pressure on this uh, to 30-50, and that's done by loosening this nut here. So for every full rotation, you're gonna expect about two to three PSI lost um, on that 40-60, so essentially three and a half full turns should get us really close um, to 3050 and if you've watched our how to adjust a pressure switch video you would be able to see that that's exactly what we've done so uh, I'm going to turn this three and a half full turns so one two three and a half that's all we should need, and this pump should be ready to go. So we can throw this back on. I'm actually gonna tighten these up real quick here, throw this on, and we'll be ready to get the rest hooked up. All right, guys, so as the heater kicks on, let me tell you what we just had to go through here. It's agony, not really. But, uh, so this pressure switch, since this uh, pressure switch fits so closely to this motor, we just cut this out um, and had to shave a little bit of the plastic off in order to actually get this switch to sit all the way down so that we can properly close it up. That looks great. So now, all that we've got left to do, wherever I set the tube down, must have flown away. Well, uh, after this short commercial break, while well, we find our tube, no, there it is. Okay. So now we just gotta get this guy hooked up. So, first thing we need to do is get this plug out of the top of this guy. Okay, so we got this plug here, and it's kind of a downside that this pump doesn't have more ports. Um, so we're pretty limited on where we can actually put the pressure switch. So it's gonna have to go here. Normally this would be uh, your priming port, and then this would be your drain port, but uh, we're gonna instruct the customer to come out of this and put a T in right here and then come out where, with their plumbing maybe over here or over the other way um, so that we still have a priming port. So we'll create another port by putting a T out of the discharge. We're gonna Teflon tape all these threads before we throw them in just to make sure we have a nice seal. So this here is a three quarter inch by one quarter inch galvanized bushing. So that'll go in here first. And we'll get this nice and tight. I want to get this nice and tight before I continue to the next step because the next fitting we're going to be putting in is this and we want to be able to angle it the right direction. So we want this good and tight before we do that just because if we have to come back and tighten it, we've already got our angle right. We're kind of up a creek, you know. This is basically a quarter inch adapter for NPT threads by quarter inch tubing. So there's a tiny little barb on there that helps to hold the tubing in place so that you don't have to put a clamp on it, uh, especially when you're doing low pressure operation. We're gonna be using two different styles of those. The other one I'll have to, oh, it's already in the, pressure switch down here. So you can see this one's a 90 and this one comes straight out and that'll all make sense when we get on to installing that side of things. When you're using Teflon tape around your pressure switch, try to kind of move it out of the way because you don't want any of that to shred off and plug up the pressure switch diaphragm. So just kind of a word to the wise. So we'll get this thing tightened in and we're going to try to aim it right that way towards the pressure switch. There we go. 
I think I like that. That's a good, good angle. Perfect. So this tubing, it just slides right on this, this stuff here. But it is a little easier to get on if you heat it. But we'll see. We'll try our luck here. Yeah, we're going to heat it. We got some fire here. Doesn't take a whole lot of heat. We're just more or less getting it warm. And then it should just shove right on, hopefully, here. Come on, baby. Kind of just work it back and forth. And push it on as tight as you can. And it doesn't hurt it to hit it with just a little bit of heat because plastic tends to shrink. But we're not going to give it much. This isn't heat shrink tubing, it's poly tubing. So. All right, now what we need to do, we're gonna let this cool off for just a second here. So we're gonna clean up our area and then we'll cut back in when we're ready to attach the next piece. So here we are, we've got our plastic nice and cool and it should hold on there pretty good. You can see I'm tugging on it pretty good there. I could probably pull the pump clean off the table, which you want that thing on there good. Um, I don't usually use clamps on these unless you have a problem with them blowing off. Um, you could definitely put a clamp on there if you start running into that problem. Sometimes these will get a little stretched out and kind of flop off of there and I think a person could probably heat it up and get the same result as using a clamp, but I did mention high pressure earlier and that, that seems to be the where I draw the line. So, Okay, so we've got our other fitting here. This is going to be installed on the underside of this pressure switch. And I would flip the pump up, but it's got the board in the way, so you wouldn't be able to see it anyways. So I'm just going to take a little box wrench here, spanner, tighten it, tighten it, not loosen it. So I did cut this tubing to be a little bit long so that I could adjust it once we got everything situated. So the first thing I'm going to do is just figure out kind of how long I want this to be. And I think I want it to be about that long. So I'm just going to cut it off. I like to use a razor knife on this little poly tubing because it, it actually gives you a nice clean cut as opposed to using like snips or something. Snips or something are going to just smush the plastic together and it doesn't give you a nice clean cut. So let's just make sure that looks good. Yeah, looks great. We're going to heat this guy up real quick. Just a little heat. There. Now it went all the way on. Second attempt's the charm. Now just a tiny bit of heat to secure things. Keep the heat out of the motor. And that should be it. All right, YouTube. Well, we successfully got our uh, extension cord on installed onto this pump here. So we're ready to ship this guy off to our customer. I hope you learned something here. I know I definitely learned a thing or two today. Um, it was a lot of fun putting this together. So don't forget to check out more of the videos on our channel. We do have new videos going up every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, so subscribe. You'll make sure to get the notifications on those. That's awesome. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave those in the section below. Otherwise, thanks for joining us. Have a great day.